firefighters know their job is dangerous, but they do it anyway to protect us. Tonight, we're learning about a concern firefighters have with the gear that they wear to protect them. As your reporter Michael Abeda shows us, some are now asking lawmakers to help. When our kids first come to our firehouse to see what mom, dad does, what aunt or uncle does for a living, the first thing we do is put them in our gear. And to me, that hit me into my core. There are not a lot of regrets Dave Foster has when it comes to his 25 year career in firefighting, but letting kids touch his gear is one of them. Knowing that our gear was contaminated, I would have never put my kids in that gear. According to a new report by National Institute of Standards and Technology, textiles used to manufacture protective coats and pants worn by firefighters contain measurable amounts of cancer-causing PFAS and forever chemicals. It also says firefighters' gear tends to release more chemicals the older and more beat up it gets. That's bad news for anyone wearing fire protective gear, especially firefighters. Due to the extreme heat we're, we're exposed to, our pores are open like a, like a sponge and the PFAS in our gear is degrading while we're wearing it and absorbing in our bloodstream as well. Foster is also the president of the Colorado Professional Firefighters. He says learning that the gear designed to protect him and his friends could be responsible for killing them is a slap in the face. It was a revelation that, that kind of shook us to our core. He says federal and state governments need to act to protect firefighters and their families. And we're making good strides, not fast enough, but we are making strides and we're doing this for the next generation. My son wants to be a firefighter. I want him to have better gear than I did. Foster says there is gear being used overseas that doesn't contain PFAS or forever chemicals, but they can't be used here because of regulations. It's one of the things he's been working on in Washington, D.C. with Colorado's lawmakers to change. In Denver, Michael Aveta covering Colorado First.